ready? How does a community prepare for the unexpected? By planning ahead. You know, taking action now can help minimize the level of storm damage. We want to have plenty of time for questions and answers because I know there are plenty of questions within this uh, within this gathering and that uh, there will be some good answers. So, Dave, if you'd take the wireless microphone, please. And you can stand there, you can stand here, you can stand in the middle, whatever makes you most comfortable. Uh, is it on? I uh, cannot see. Is this on? There you go. We can hear you now. All right. I'm Davy Jones, running for sheriff here in Berkeley County. And I'm going to start my speech off a little different. Most people will tell you what they're going to do if they get elected. I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to violate the Constitution just because a legislator decided to make an unlawful law in legislation like red flag law. I'm not going to confiscate your guns because someone else said to. I, I will stand with the Constitution. I took an oath. And when it comes to the sheriff, your sheriff is your very first and last line of defense to defend your rights and your liberties. So I respect all the other candidates, but I always say, please do your research and select a person that best fits what you agree with. Uh, I'm going to keep it short. I would have let ladies go first, so maybe Teresa would like to come up. Actually, I have an order. And no, I'll oh, okay, you, you have an order. order. All righty. So. Teresa does not appear next, but uh, All right, John thank Warren, you. by coincidence, you do. So, John, if you'd be kind enough to come up and uh, address the group. John commented to me this evening that his wife was the one who was much better to look at than him, and having known them both for much more than a decade now, I can absolutely agree with that. <laughs> John, if you'd be so kind. Thank you, Ed. My name is John Orm. I'm obviously running for Berkeley County Sheriff. Most of you know me. Most of you know what I stand for. Um, again, like uh, Davey said, I don't want to drag this out because... All these people and a lot of questions is probably going to drag on more than most of us wanted anyway. But when you're looking into a sheriff, you got to really think about what is the sheriff's job. The sheriff's job is primarily and solely the administrator. Simply that. He's not the deputy out on the street. He's not the one that's arriving at your house when you have a problem. He's the one that's making sure the budget's done. He's the one that's making sure the schedules are done. He's the one that's setting policy and determining what happens. That's what I do. I was a police officer for 10 years with Martinsburg, and after that, I started several businesses. Ran those businesses, did well with those businesses. I know how to get things done. I know how to handle budgets. I know how to handle employees. At one point, I had over 200 employees. That's slightly more than what the Sheriff's Department entails right now. So I know how to do this. And when you're thinking about other candidates. We have some great candidates running. I don't want to take anything from them. Some very great qualified candidates. But none of them bring the administrative experience that I bring. And I just want you to keep that in mind. And I'll pass it off to the next candidate. Thank you. Uh, Mike Lang, you're next on the list if you'd be so kind, sir. <laughs> Mike. Well, I'm new to this political game, so I had a five-minute speech written, but uh, I'm going to echo everybody else. I'm going to keep this short. My name is Mike Lang, and I'm running for sheriff of Berkeley County. I would tell you this. I got newfound respect for any candidate that throws their hat in this arena. Uh, we got a lot of good candidates. What I think sets myself apart from most of them is I spent 25 years in Maryland prison system. I started in January 91, retired in May 2016. Through that time, I raised, uh, come up through the ranks. Started at CO1, CO2, Sergeant, Lieutenant, and Captain. At each rank, you got more responsibility. When I got to the Captain rank, I had over 500 employees under me and 3,000 inmates that I was responsible for. As a Captain, you were responsible for um, administrative duties, discipline, uh, policy writing, policy review, a lot of other items. I think that's what I bring. That, I know that's what I bring. I bring that to the Berkeley County. I bring a, a deep compassion for Berkeley County. 
I'm fourth generation. Uh, my whole family's here. And um, I just thank you for your time and coming tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, thank Mike. You. Teresa, not to be impolite to you in any way, <clears throat> but that's where the list in no particular order had you uh, appear this evening. How are you? Uh, the first thing I want to say is thank you guys for being here. Honestly, my friends, my family, the community. Um, just taking the time out to be here tonight is really important because it means that you really care about your community. And even if you're not here for me and one of my opponents, I still have love for you because you guys are here, okay? Um, so my name is Teresa. It's spelt Teresa without the H. If you guys have questions about that, you have to get to my mom with that. My apologies. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Um, so what I stand for, honestly, my platform is um, I stand for community policing, aggressive drug interdiction, and also retention of our deputies and our county staff. I mean, honestly, that's what's most important. And when it comes to community policing, I think you have to have a balance. And right now it's unbalanced. Uh, you can't have a community that feels they don't have the law enforcement support. And you also can't have law enforcement that feels like they don't have community support. So I think it has to be very balanced. It really does. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, I can answer questions afterwards, but my husband's here, a uh, 14-year veteran from the Martinsburg City Police Department, my son. Um, so thank you guys for being here, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Teresa. Proud to say I've never been arrested by either of those individuals. Uh, Nate Harmon is with us this evening also, and he's the final candidate we have on the list this evening, unless there's one I don't know about. Well, let me start off by thanking everybody for being here, sacrificing your time to be here this evening. Like uh, Mr. Wilson said, it's very important to all of us that uh, we get some proactive change going on. I honestly feel as a candidate that I represent the people's voice. I represent hope. I represent change. Through that change, you're going to see aggressive drug interdiction. You're going to see officers properly trained to reduce risk and liability. I surrounded my security career starting off in the Marine Corps, doing security forces. Left the Marine Corps, came up here as the West Virginia State Trooper. I've got 11 years combined law enforcement experience, not only as a trooper, but chief of police at Reesville PD, where I multiplied their budget times five. I understand the necessity for training. I understand that these officers, these deputies, are currently in a situation of degrading morale and welfare. I offer a welfare and morale program that gives them a checkup from the neck up. That get, makes them feel important with what they do. But most importantly, the service they provide to you. I think that it's important that they understand that the community has cried for help and that you understand as a community, I've heard it. I want you to understand that by no means will you see any stagnant work ethic from Harmon and Young. Harmon and Young represent change. Harmon and Young is getting rid of the old regime, the old regime mindsets, the good old boy system, the smoke and mirror tactics that you're sick and tired of. We represent justice for those that haven't gotten it yet, the Mike Kilmers. The three drawer high unserved warrants that are currently sitting in the sheriff's office. Those are thousands of victims waiting for justice. So again, as your candidate, I want you to think about who as a candidate for sheriff has volunteered their time for the community. Even prior to running, three years ago, I joined the local Berkeley County Emergency Planning Committee. On that committee, we plan and help do tabletop exercises for various organizations to prepare for emergency events and help the community become more real, re resilient. I initiated a Stop the Bleed program called the Jacobs Kit that represents the spirit of a six-year-old boy who got killed in an active shooter incident in Townsville, South Carolina providing schools, hospitals, and community service facilities with training. 
Nate, with all due respect, since the other candidates limited themselves, I want to keep you within five minutes. So again, I appreciate your time here today. Um, again, take a holistic view of the candidates, their work ethic prior to running. And again, come May, we would have been nine months in the grind of this. Thank you very much. I'm going to start off with a question, and I'm going to ask each of the candidates to respond to it. I'm just like a one-minute answer. It's a very complicated subject. How do you candidates feel about the fact that the city of Martinsburg, which is this big, has the same number of law enforcement officers that the county of Berkeley, which is this big, has? John Oram, I can see you there in the corner. Would you respond to that for me? I think it's a travesty. Uh, I think we should have closer to 100 deputies out on the street, truthfully. Um, however, we just simply don't have the budget for it. Uh, and I understand that you know, everybody wants more, more police officers, more paramedics, more everything, but we've got to be able to fund it. We've got to be able to um, get them vehicles, get their insurance paid. And without some other way of getting additional money into the department, I just don't see it happening. I don't see the county coming through with any additional budgeting at this point. Now, granted, we can do grants. We can do other things to get money into the discretionary funds of the sheriff's department. But we've got to do what, what we can do with what we have right at the moment and deal with that as we can. Thank you. Teresa, are you nearby the microphone? Yeah, she's hiding in the corner. Sorry about that. You'd pass that down, John. Oh, it's on its way around. Okay. Um, Let the I, young guy do the running. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. So your question, I think it's a huge issue. Um, the city of Martinsburg has roughly 17, um, so many people. And how can you have 50-some city officers and 50-some deputies to cover the same grounds? Um, I think there, it's, just, it's a problem. It really is. It's a, it's a hazard, honestly. Thank you. Davey, would you care to comment on this? It's a yeah, it, it really is a, a terrible tragedy, but I think the issue is, like John was saying, is budgeting, but I think that the, that the money's in the budget. I think the real issue is retaining deputies because they tend to go you know, in, 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 out of state once they get trained. Now, I don't know if a lot of people know this, the sheriff gets a salary. He also gets a percentage of collected property tax. If I'm elected sheriff, I plan on sharing that bonus with the whole department based on seniority. This way, we can keep the deputies that have been there the longest and been trained and have the experience because they see they're being appreciated. Good. Dave, if you'd pass the uh, microphone to Mike. Mike, the mic. I can't hear too well, so the question was how you feel about the staff. Well, the, the fact that the, the city, as small as it is, has this, almost the same number of law enforcement officers as the county. Right. Do I think the department needs to grow? Yes, it does. Does it need to grow at a rapid pace? No, it doesn't. You're going to have more headaches managing the newer staff, training the newer staff. What I would like to see out in Berkeley County is we create an infrastructure that allows the department to grow with the county. I know we're behind the eight ball right now. We have to add more staff and more people. I think we can do it add five and be budget neutral with the current budget that's in hand. So staffing's my forte. Uh, you have to do conduct a, a staffing analysis and make get the right size for Berkeley County. And I don't want to fix the problem tomorrow and have it again in two years. I want a s infrastructure in place that as the county grows, the department grows automatically. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mr. Harmon, are you nearby? Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. I lost you in the crowd. All right. Um, I think that, yes, it's, it's a problem. But I don't want to talk about what everybody already knows and is aware of. I think it starts from the front. When I looked at the budget for 2017, 2018, there was, and I'll just use this as a simple example, there was $100,000 worth of overtime money given back to the county. I don't think that that's appropriate. I think that there's a serious reallocation of funds that need to happen internally with the current sheriff's budget plan. Also, the image of the sheriff's office. 
that needs to start, and I'll give you another example. When I was in the Marines, a recruiter would call me up and say, hey, come on in and do this mile and a half run. Come on in and do sit-ups and pull-ups to make me better, to make me successful in boot camp so I wasn't a retread or come back having failing the PT test. I think the deputies, the recruits, the applicants need to do that application online, streamline that process, because honest people work. Then the sheriff's office closes at 5.30. So streamline that process, pick up the phone, call the applicants, make them feel important, let them know that you care as an administrator, and follow them through this process. Because if they go down to the academy and fail the PT test, well, guess what? Your taxpayer dollars are paying for them sitting back at the sheriff's office because they failed the PT test, and now they got to wait for the next class to come up again. Image, mentorship program, and reallocation of the current budget. Very good. Thank you very much. Let's call on the audience now. I know there are some questions here, and I would ask you, please, to make your questions a question. None of you are running for office this evening. Um, I don't want you doing a stump speech. Please direct the question to the candidates, if you'd be so kind. Samson, since I saw your hand go up first. John, at lunch uh, a couple of days ago, you emphasized repeatedly the term leadership. What do you mean by that? What kind of leadership are you going to provide? Leadership isn't something that you tell people that you're doing. Leadership is something that's shown. Basically, as a sheriff, what you need to do is you need to talk to each one of the deputies that are working for you, each one of the people in the tax office, each one of the people in animal control, and you need to find out what their path in life is, what they want from life. You know, everybody in life wants certain things. You know, they want the ability to, to prosper. They want the ability to matter in this world. And ultimately, they want to see if they can make a difference in this world. And... If you have deputies that are out here just working the beat every day, but they really want to be a detective, you need to know that. You need to be able to make sure they're getting the training so they can advance in the direction they want to go. If you have deputies that want to work with abused children or abused women, you need to make sure they get the training and they're able to grow in the path that they want to grow in. And you need to be able to discipline at the same time. You know, when you're a sheriff, you have to break, give a little separation. It's just the same as in the business world. You're friendly, but you're not really friends because if you're really friends, you're probably going to cover for them a little bit. You need to be able to step up and say, you're wrong, here's your disciplinary, and move on. And it doesn't have to be a mean thing. It just has to be done. Thank you, John. That's an, an excellent answer. Do you, any of the other candidates care to, to comment on that subject? Nate, since you're right there. I do agree with John. It's leadership by example. You'll see that very phrase on those brochures I have on my display table right outside this room. But I also believe that to, to properly lead, uh, a good leader does not create more followers. They create more leaders. And that is leadership by example. But they also don't care how much you know until they know that you care. And what I mean by that is, is, is you have to identify the special skills that they possess. And I'll give an example. There was a bear cat sitting behind the sheriff's office that Jefferson County uses more than Berkeley County. Matter of fact, Berkeley County doesn't use it at all. There was good, skilled officers that ran that SRT, that special response program. I ran the special response program in the state police. I was part of a fugitive recovery task force. I was the marijuana eradication officer for the Eastern Panhandle. And I was also on the crime scene response team. There's a crime scene response vehicle sitting there at the sheriff's office collecting dust. But yet we have specially skilled officers that can run in that and run into that crime scene response vehicle. As part of the crime scene response team for the state police, we serve seven counties. And if it's not sitting there, it's idle an awful lot. And I think it can be used more efficiently. By identifying the special skill sets that these deputies currently have, you'll automatically array, raise their morale because they're being used for what the purpose they joined the law enforcement agency for. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, would you care to comment? It's optional. You don't need to answer every question. My response to this is very simple. I always give the definition between the difference between a leader and a manager. The manager is going to do all the things right. The leader does all the right things. 
And I, I agree with what uh, Nate said. Leadership starts at the top. You find out what their suits, their interests, and basically manipulate them, make them perform. Our game plan is simple. It's train, equip, supervise. Thank you very much. Teresa? I couldn't actually hear the question just about leadership. What is your definition of leadership vis-a-vis the, uh, the uh, okay. sheriff's uh, department? As, as far as leadership goes, I think that it's all about creating a team of like-minded individuals. Um, I think being a leader, you can lead by example, but you also have to know what it's like to be in those boots. That's my personal opinion. I think it's very important to have law enforcement background, so that way you, you can understand where they're coming from. That's, that's my personal opinion. David, would you care to come? Yeah. As a veteran myself, I'm going to agree a lot with Nate here. Leadership is lead by example. Don't have your people do what you wouldn't do. But it's also making sure that you have the right people in the right position. You got to use their talents. Everybody has a specific skill and talent they're very good at. You got to make sure you use their talents to the best of the ability. That's how you use your resources properly. That's how you save money. Excellent perspective. Thank you very much. I saw a couple questions here, gentlemen. Either of you, you want to fight it out to decide who goes first? He's older. We'll let him go first. If you would. So the only person I heard specifically speak about anything Second Amendment related was David Jones saying that he would refuse to enforce any kind of red flag laws. Um, what are the candidates' thoughts on um, citizens being able to carry and those same red flag laws, would you enforce them? So the question pertains to the red flag laws. How do the other candidates, um, since uh, Mr. Harmon, who was it that made the comment about the red flag? David's right here, so we'll let him. You know. Here's the interesting thing about red flag laws. They don't have due process. They are unconstitutional. And as a veteran, and as a politician, you take an oath to defend the Constitution, not some arbitrary law that makes people feel good. So even though these laws do get passed, that does not make them constitutional. And a sheriff's responsibility is to protect the liberties of the citizens of the county. You can. I can guarantee you that, and I pledge this, that I will never enforce a red flag law. There is no due process. You are stealing property from another without giving them the ability to defend themselves. And the sheriff's responsibility is to defend the citizen's liberty. So I will never enforce those laws. Our gun confiscation or any law that's unconstitutional, including these ridiculous uh, you know, violation of the First Amendment where they tell you you can't speak but in a certain area. Very good. If you just pass the, um, the mic to, uh, to Mike the mic again. I support the Second Amendment wholly. I, uh, I'm not going to go much further than David did because he got a lot of good points. I do feel it violates the due process. And we're not going to support anything we it's deemed unconstitutional and violates the due process. Very good. Teresa, would you care to comment on the, uh, the red flag laws that were being discussed? Um, I, I will just say that I stand behind our Constitution and our amendments, and I would uphold um, the law as far as that's concerned. I think we've missed someone. Did, uh, did everyone have an opportunity to comment? Mr. Harmon. Sorry, sir. Not at all. Hey, guys, I'll tell you right now, I think I can speak for all the candidates. We're against any red flag laws. We're pro-Second Amendment. I've already been down Charleston as of last year to make our schools safer with a program called the Guardian Program that uh, helps protect our children here at school, even prior to my candidacy. I'm also a member, and I'm proud to announce that I'm a member of the Citizens Defense League, who are a proactive lobbyist organization who's already passed and lobbied for a preemptive restriction against any additional laws that prohibit a West Virginian uh, to possess a firearm. They're working on Senate Bill 96 that sits there and goes further to protect your right and additional lethal weapons. Again, I am pro Second Amendment. I don't think any of the candidates are not. But prior to my candidacy, I've already been working on it. And I'm, again, proud to say that I'm a member of the Citizens Defense League and I will continue to fight for your gun rights. Matter of fact, that gun fund, my intentions with that gun fund is to take portions of that gun fund and give back to the community and provide the community 
with firearm safety, handling, and manipulation courses for free. Thank you very much. I'd like to I'm sorry, John. I didn't mean to cut That's you off. Okay. Uh, again, I, I am pro gun. I am pro Second Amendment. I don't believe in red flag laws, but I see some tricky, tricky things to deal with. And I noticed Nate didn't say he wouldn't enforce where the others did. And maybe that's because he realizes there's going to be, we need to stop these things before they even get started. Because what's going to happen under red flag law, the way I know them, is a judge, a circuit judge, issues an order for the sheriff to send people out and pick the guns up. If you don't do it, you're violating the circuit judge's order. Are they going to arrest the sheriff? I mean, this has got to really be stopped before it ever gets started. Very good points. Sir, you had a question as well. The microphone's nearby. Thank you. My name is Andrew Mowry, and I'm running for county council. And the reason I, I say that is I think the relationship between the sheriff's department and the county council is very important. And I think it's been tense, shall we say, for the last few years. I'd like to hear from each candidate as to how they would approach their relationship with the county council. Very good. Uh, Davey, if we could start with you, I'm going to go back to the order that was on the original list so I don't skip anyone this time. I believe, because uh, the current sheriff complains a lot about the council not wanting to give him money or can't fund this or fund that, but I haven't heard him say that he's done any cost analysis. I believe that you've got to go through the budget and you've got to eliminate stuff, because all you do is when you don't eliminate stuff, you tack more stuff on, is that you charge us more taxes. So I, as sheriff, I'll go through the budget line item by line item, look at the resources and see, and then I'll bring that to the county council, who I happen to know personally, most of them, and I also know him. So, and it, it has to be a team with the sheriff and the council. It cannot be adversarial. You, everybody knows you get, you get more results with, sh with honey than you do with vinegar, right? So you've got to work together. If you can't work together, you're just spinning your wheels. Very good. Dave, if you'd pass the uh, microphone to John Orham. You know, I like the people in the council. Uh, they're all good people, and they're all, I think, doing the best for what they think the county needs. Um, as far as the relationship with them, you know, we know that there's a strained relationship now with the current sheriff, uh, who, Curdy, I, I additionally like him. I like the county council members. The problem, I think, is the approach to the county council. Uh, I said earlier, you know, the budget doesn't allow for us to have 100 deputies, but I think it does allow for us to have a few more. It's just a matter of how we approach it. You know, Nate said something earlier that uh, has happened for many years with these current deputy or current sheriffs. You know, they're turning money back in off the budget. Well, anybody ever in business knows you turn money back in, you're not going to get more money next year. Never made any sense to me why they do this. But you approach the council and you approach the council, and you approach the council. Now, again, I don't think they're trying to be adversarial. I just believe that they're trying to do what they believe is best. But they're not in the, the department. They're not watching the deputies struggle, you know, from call to call to call, not having time to do their reports. So you just got to break this down to them piece by piece, show them everything that you need, and work with them. And I think they will work with you back. Very good. John, if you'd pass that to Mike. My approach to dealing with the county council is very simple. You give them all the necessary information to say yes. You give them the numbers. You give them the stats. You give them the reasons why you need this. I have witnessed the current administration say, why do you need seven more deputies? Crimes up. That was an answer. You got to give statistics. Give numbers. Give reasons. Give them every reason to say yes. You have to foster. You're not going to agree on everything. But you can't blindside them that you need... 60 new vests either. You've got to plan these things out. You've got to inform them what's going on. You need a line of communication and keep that line of communication open. Teresa, if you'd be kind enough. I'm just going to concur with everyone else. I think that uh, you do have to have a, a good, good relationship going between the two. Um, it's all about teamwork. Um, it's, it's important. Uh, I think there's also a lot of grants that are av available. Um, public grants for, for tons of different positions. So I think that's important to look at. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Herman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'll be specifically honest. I'm a man of action. For the past five months, I've sat and 
met with delegates, I've met with the council members away from that Dunn building, and I've met with leaders of the community, and the same thing gets echoed back and forth all over again. The same thing gets said by these leaders, is that the sheriff's office, this current administration, lacks communication. That is Kevin Knowles with the Mountaineer Recovery Center. That is Stephanie, the intern director for the Berkeley Recovery Resource Center. That is members of the council. You cannot sit there and point the finger because you didn't get what you want, throw your hands up in the air and throw a baby fit, and be all unprofessional and turn your back on the people that you need to work with and foster relationships with to better the community, to help the community. I'm not a yes man, and I'm not a political puppet. But I will tell you this, and like I've told them, I'm not going to point the finger at you and say the blood is on your hands and you will not do the same to me. We will have a good working relationship. And those relationships get fostered from the beginning. You don't wait for those to come to you. You talk about the issues that need to be resolved and your ideas to resolve them before you go in front of the cameras, before you go in front of the entire board. And you don't invite the cameras to the chamber meeting just so you can make a spectacle. That is not fostering good relationships. And that's not only with the county council, but that is with all the organizations that need a good fostering relationship with the sheriff's office across the board. Is there someone down here who has a question? I'll let Nate bring the microphone. Chief Alderton. Greetings, folks. My name is John Alderton, and for nearly 31 years I served in the, the military. And in the military it was action when you had to write evaluations, action equals impact and results. Um, and we heard about statistics and building that rapport with the county council. The question I would like to ask each of you as candidates, will you make a campaign promise, and, and I'm going, just a, a promise from your heart, because my dad always said that's one of the most valuable promises you can ever make somebody. Will you make a promise that within your first year, at the conclusion, you will do an annual report much like the city of Martinsburg does for their police department? It's very comprehensive. It talks about the, the crime rate, their people, most of all. Because that's one thing, that is your, going to be one of your five, maybe another candidate, greatest asset is its people. Will you make that campaign promise to do an annual report of your department for Thank you. everybody to see? Thank you, Chief. If you'd pass that to, uh, to Nate, we'll, we'll let him uh, have a moment with it. I'm sorry, what's your first name? John. Hey, good question, John. Um, I think and truly believe that there needs to be more transparency with the, law, with the Sheriff's Office. Um, I see no issue with... Uh, having that detailed report on the sheriff's office website. None at all. Um, we need to be more transparent. We need to educate the community more. And what I mean by that is getting out of that office, talking at the HOA meetings with these subdivisions within the community, educating the community on current trends in the drug activity, getting the community more involved, because an involved community is a resilient community, it's a proactive community. So I truly believe in transparency. And yes, I do make that promise to you, John. Thank you. Uh, Teresa, if you'd be kind enough. I didn't get to hear your complete question. Um, I believe it was in reference. The city police makes an annual report. Yes. Uh, for mm -hmm. the community and everybody. They do. Will you make a promise here tonight from any of the audience Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of other policies that Martinsburg has that I think are important to adopt as well. But absolutely. Very good. If we'd pass the microphone to Mike Lang, please. I'm going in reverse order just to keep everyone on their toes. John, thank you for the question. I'll make it a promise. I'll make it one better. I'll give every quarterly, quarterly report. I do report now to uh, the council for the movement within the council, uh, within the judicial center, within the community service, and with the roadside letter program. I submit that yearly now. And I agree with uh, Mr. Harmon. It should be transparent. It should be made on the website. 
I think we can do a lot, a lot of good on the website and inform the community. Like I said, I'll give you one better. I'll give you one every quarter. Mr. Orham? That's an easy question. Yes. Uh, I don't see why it's not being done. You know, one of the things I miss a lot is the daily read in the journal or in some other newspaper of all the calls that deputies went on. You know, it's important that the county and the citizens in the county know exactly what the deputies are doing. I'm not talking every little detail. I'm talking about how many calls they're getting, how busy they are. They need to stand behind the department and be a proactive part of the department. So, yes, absolutely, transparency, a, a yearly report. I, mean, I don't think I could do a quarterly or a quarterly report would be kind of difficult because it takes a lot of time and man hours to do that. But a yearly report, absolutely, it's something you almost have to do because that's the only way that you can present to the council is to document your, your calls, you document everything, and you present it to the council. That's how we go about getting additional monies to fund additional deputies. Thank you. John, would you pass the mic to uh, Davey, please? Yes. Not only will I make the pledge, but I will do one better. The website right now is kind of hokey. I'm a systems administrator. This is my bread and butter. I will put not only the the, the uh, budget and everything on the website, but also they're talking about transparency, a, a comment section for citizens to, to make comments or, or list complaints if they have a complaint or they want to see something done differently. Because we all know in this day and age, it's all about technology and the internet. The people don't really reach out much except with their phones anymore. So I want to be able to have a concise website where air, communication can run back and forth between the department <coughs> and the citizens via the most modern technology. Because I believe that's one of the biggest problems in the department. And I want to leverage technology as sheriff since I've been doing it for 30 years and make the department become into the 21st century. Good. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Most of us have looked at the blue lights on a police car from one side. There's one gentleman in the room who's looked at them occasionally from another side. Sheriff Smith, would you have a question you'd like to pose to the candidates this evening? Or would you like to think about it for a minute and I'll come back to you? That sounds ominous. Someone down the center, please. I'll stand so the folks out there can hear me. I didn't come here tonight really expecting a microphone, but my name is Clint Hogman. And I'm typically associated uh, with the Berkeley County Solid Waste Authority, where I'm a volunteer. I've done it for 29 years. Our phone rings off the hook from citizens complaining about the lack of enforcement of West Virginia's litter laws and open dumping laws and open burning laws. And people file formal complaints, and by our records, over 30-some percent of the time, a deputy doesn't even respond to the complaint. So I'm curious, from the candidate's perspective, um, what do you know about our litter problem? And if you're elected sheriff, what do you intend to enforce? How do you intend to enforce the laws? Clint, thank you very much. An excellent question. Mike, can we start with you? Sure. As I said, uh, I oversee the roadside litter program. I think the date we started in June 18, to date we got like 176,000 pounds of trash off Berkeley County Roadside. Um, to answer your question, what we will do, I believe in 2017 uh, they changed some uh, codes that allows for a, a litter control officer within West Virginia as long as he's certified a police officer. I would do everything in my power to get that position filled. So thank you. Hey, if you would. I just, uh, I read an article um, about a week ago that from Katie Wilkes and her, her running her re-election. And in that article it stated how she had, her and the judicial system had saved the taxpayers uh, thousands upon thousands of dollars for the community service program that they, they currently have. Um, I talked with her and I asked her, well, what happened to the trustee program, the work release program that the inmates used to do? Why aren't we doing that? Why do we have a bus with a bathroom in the back of it sitting at the judicial center, again, collecting dust? Why can't we use that? Well, my answer to you is, let's build a robust, a proactive 
Deputy Reserve Program. We have additional officers that we can help monitor that. And again, with the judicial system, the, the court orders and how they work, well, I can plead to community service and they'll give me till May 20th of 2020 to get that community, the eight hours community service in. The problem with that is, is they can show up at the last week that they're required to, so there's no consistency in regards to reporting for community service. So it's very difficult currently uh, for members that have community service that do that, that participate in the litter pickup program um, to have consistent people, five or more, working on a specific day, two to three days a week on that litter program. I think it can be more proactive. I think we can adjust and talk to the judicial center, the judicial system, Katie Wilkes, and, and talk about how we can improve those things. How can we use the bus that's currently setting? How can we re-establish the inmate, the work release program? Because honestly, if, if I was in jail and I had the opportunity to be able, good behavior, what have you, to be able to be on that work release program, well, that's in and by itself a rehabilitation, a reward or good behavior and giving back to the community. Why wouldn't you want that? Why isn't it currently in place? I will definitely and aggressively pursue that. You'd pass it to John Oren, please. Well, I have to say, I concur with Nate, um, but I want to go a little bit further. Over the weekend, I was at Bricks 27 sitting down for a birthday party, and a gentleman there who I had met before, but he, he brought up some issues. He, he was telling me about down on Route 11 North that there was an open dump. He called in about, couldn't get a response. They said it wasn't something that the Sheriff's Department handled. And I said, well, last thing I knew, last person I knew was Ron Gardner. He was the litter control officer a couple years ago. They don't currently have a litter control officer. And he said, I couldn't get anybody to respond. Basically, it looked like there was a, a trailer that had fallen apart and they were trying to bulldoze it into the ground. He said, I called DEP, couldn't get a response. And so, yes, there, I, I think there does need to be a litter control officer, absolutely. But I concur with Nate on as far as getting a, a bus up and running again and getting these community service people out here picking up stuff along the roads. I mean, that's free help. you got to use the free help. Teresa? Thank you. Um, so our business is beside the tax office, and we're constantly seeing the community service out there, um, you know, get, picking up trash and, and, uh, and things like that. So I, I see it outside my building. And I see them actually um, actively involved in that. But I would have to say that I would, um, I would have to look into it more and see if it needs to be adjusted. Thank you. Davey? Nate did an excellent job on touching on how to solve the litter, picking the litter up. But how do we actually solve the root problem? And I believe that's community outreach, getting the community involved in helping law enforcement. I've actually developed a website already called tip-watch.com. And it allows citizens to, to submit anonymous or non-anonymous tips to law enforcement. So if they see somebody litter, and they can literally take a picture and submit it right there on their phone, right to the, 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 the sheriff's department or whoever, whatever, because it's national, it's not just here. And it also goes to drug enforcement. A lot of people don't want to get involved. They see their, their, they see their neighbor you know, down the street dealing drugs. They don't want to get involved. This allows them to assist law enforcement to stop that kind of behavior. And that's what we have to do. Yeah, we can clean it up, but we need to stop it. And the way to stop it is to hold people accountable. Thank you very much. We have yet to have a question from any of the ladies in the audience tonight. Is there anyone who would care to chime in? Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Beth Cole. I'm an officer with Martinsburg City Police Department. I'm not sure if any of you all know, I have the opportunity to be close with the deputies, but morale among our deputies is almost at an all-time low under the current administration. So my question to the candidates would be, day one, what would you do to improve morale among our deputies? Nate, if you would, since the microphone's right there. Thanks, Mary Beth. I appreciate that. Um, I did a radio talk show yesterday, and I was asked this very question once I swear in. What's the first two things that I'm going to say to the deputies? And the first two things that I'm going to say to the deputies is welcome to the family and welcome to being cops again. Right now, they're currently under a dictatorship that micromanages them. They feel like they're walking on glass. They don't get the training opportunities. They get denied. Hence, the reason why the SRT vehicles sitting collecting dust. So 
identifying the deputy's special skills, exactly what they want. I loved doing crime scene response. I loved doing blood splatter analysis. I could sit there and tell you whether it's animal DNA or human DNA on a crime scene. I loved being able to bring justice to those victims. And I can't, I can't imagine not being able to identify those special skills that exist with the current deputies. And you start identifying them and giving them the training that they need, that they desire to be productive in the community, they'll be more eager to punch in on that clock versus punching out on that clock. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John? You know, I've been in these forums before, and it's always difficult when you got five, six, seven candidates running and you get the same question because we're all Republican, we're all running for the same position, we're all pretty much going to answer the question pretty much the same way. Um, as far as uh, the morale of the department, it, it's a shame. But I have to concur with Nate again, you know. Uh, I actually just posted about this the other day that, and it'll go back to one of the questions I answered earlier, you know, if you lead by example, and you talk to the people that are there. Money is important. Don't get me wrong. They all have families that they need to raise. All the deputies, you know, want to make a fair wage. But it's not the most important thing, I don't believe. You know, it's, it's more about that ability to progress in the position of the deputy, progress, get a supervisor position, position, go into the, you know, the detectives. You know, do things that make them feel better and make them feel them make them feel like they want to make a difference in this world. Teresa, if you would address the question. Thank you. Um, I believe in order to um, help the morale, I think that you have to give the deputies back their voice. They just want to be heard. Um, they need bring back the honor guard. Let's get health and wellness programs. Let's have peer support teams. Um, you know, how about award ceremonies like they do at Martinsburg? Let's award the deputies for going above and beyond. Um, there's, there's so many things that can be implemented to just to bring morale back and basically just give them their voice back. Excellent. Davey, if you'd comment, please. Now, I, I touched on this a little bit earlier. Using your resources intelligently, uh, using the deputies that will have special skills, making, making sure that they're in a, in a right fit. But... I also had said something about the bonus. Sheriff gets a bonus for property taxes, which is our property taxes. And as sheriff, I want to create a policy where we share that bonus with the deputies. So the longer this, this will, this way, we'll retain your deputies. People that have seniority will get, will get more of a bonus, and the, the, they'll appreciate the fact they'll appreciate their job. But also, as sheriff, I'll have an open door policy. I, I'll, a deputy can come to me at any time and voice their concerns. And if I'm not available, again, leveraging technology. Have, have the website or have a uh, part of the website where deputies only can sign in and voice their concerns. Because you have to listen to your employees. I run an IT department for a multi-million dollar manufacturing company. If I didn't listen to the people's concerns, we would just spin our wheels and get nothing accomplished. Mr. Lang? My approach to it is, is fairly simple. We're going to train, supervise, and equip. We're going to empower the deputies to do the job to the best of their ability. We're going to give them all the tools necessary they need to do their job. You know, you get a headlight out at 3 o'clock in the morning, you got to call and get approval. You call me at 3 o'clock in the morning with a headlight out, we're fighting at 7. You, you, have, you have the ability to make that decision. We will allow you to make those decisions. We will allow you to have all the tools you need to make those decisions, all the training. I agree, awards program is great. Pat on back goes a long way. And I think it's been a long time since a lot of these guys got pat on the back. Excuse me one moment. Oh, wait, there is no one else. <coughs> We're going we're gonna to limit the, uh, the questions now and uh, ask that you, you address a candidate and pick the candidate you'd like to have your question asked to. It's very warm in here. We've been talking for, uh, for close to an hour now. And I know you've all been enjoying listening to me. But there's been so much information has come from these candidates. We are indeed blessed by this fine group of individuals who have thrown their names into the ring. I see someone down here had a question, so I'll bring it down this way. And please pick the candidate you'd like to have answered. Um, Mike Lang, I have a question for you. I don't even know where he's at. He's over here. 
Um, Project Lifesaver, my name is Tiffany Wallach. I'm running for the Board of Education, and we have watched our numbers of special ed grow um, tremendously over the past few years. Um, Project Lifesaver is something that is near and dear to my heart also because I have a special ed student. Um, but what do you feel about expanding that program and giving more opportunities for special education kids to be able to have the Project Lifesaver, more parents' peace of mind, because it's not just for the kids, it's also for the parents as a peace of mind. I mean, I had a kid on it at one point. Um, he's outgrown it at this point. Um, but what do you think about expanding Project Lifesaver and giving more interest to that in the county? Thanks, Tiffany. I believe any program that's working needs to keep working and build from there. Um, we have a program what we call SOS, Safety for Seniors and Special Needs. If we have a senior that's living alone, uh, we're going to develop a program to check on them, same way the special needs people within the county. So to answer your question, we will build, if it's programs working, we will continue to build it. Yes, I'm sorry. This question, my, my name is Scott Myers. I'm a retired deputy sheriff from Berkeley County. This question is for uh, Kenneth Harmon. I, I, I know morale is at an all-time low in the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office, but I know so also know that morale is because of so much micromanagement that goes on in that department. That department has some outstanding four-tier process, a captain, a lieutenant, a sergeant, and a corporal. What would you do to let these officers be officers, to let these officers be what, what, they, what they've been promoted to do, what, what their, their trust of their, your promotion to let them to be, to be the officers that they should be? Thank you. Well, as we mentioned earlier, and, and I believe just for clarity, your question, just to paraphrase a little bit, is how am I going to let the leaders be leaders, whether it be a lieutenant or captain or whatnot? Uh, my job as the administrator is to give Tom the tools that he needs to do his job. I don't need to sit across the parking lot and watch five deputies eat at a Chinese restaurant, Chinese restaurant and then turn around and write a policy that there's too many deputies sitting in one spot. Why would you not want the familial feeling amongst those deputies, that camaraderie amongst those deputies? Because I can tell you this, as a trooper, and I was responding to a, call at a club in Inwood, I was sure in a heck glad finding myself being the only trooper for three counties that I saw four deputies running down that road to assist me. I've been in the trenches with these deputies, the current leadership that's in place now. I've worked with them. I have confidence in them, they have confidence in me, and I will allow them to do their job. I will not micromanage them. I do not have the luxury nor the time to sit in the parking lot and watch them, nor do I have the luxury or time to sit for hours in the sheriff's office and watch body camera footage. Okay? There needs to be that dictatorship mentality Stop. Like I said earlier, no more old regime tactics. No more smoke and mirrors. Thank you very much. Kim, I believe you have a question. Yes, I do. Um, for Mike, um, my name is Kim Saladini. I'm running for 61st District. Um, as a 20 plus year first responder for Berkeley County, um, I've been hearing everything about you know, what we're going to do for the deputies. We have low morale. As a first responder, picking up patients, namely women, who have suffered physical assaults. I would like to know, is there a program in place or do you have an idea in place? Because that requires a, a special type of attention to that patient. Uh, from the legal standpoint, such as your evidence, I mean, we take care of the medical side, but I've been on calls where there have been law enforcement and they've been very haphazard with how they've collected their evidence. To answer your question, I think it all goes back to training. I think with the proper training, they'll know how to handle the scenes on there with crisis intervention, with crime scene, with, with uh, a lot of different avenues. Uh, part of our plan is to work hand-in-hand -hand with the fire departments. I would love to be able to use every volunteer fire department as a substation for the officer to go set, write his report, and, and be, become one unit. Train together with them. That'd be great. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. I believe that about an hour of this is pretty close to as much as most of us can bear. But I am going to call upon uh, 
Sheriff Randy Smith uh, to ask a question, and I would like to address that to all five of the candidates, and then uh, we're going to get on towards calling in an evening after I share a few words with you. Sheriff? Well, first of all, I want everybody to know that I'm not here to endorse any candidate. But I knew every candidate except for Mr. Jones, and I have worked with every one of them in some capacity. Actually, I hired Teresa as a uh, court bailer. Uh, I worked with John when he was a city police officer. I knew Mr. Lane because his family's uh, involved in the youth fair, and he usually cooked all of my tender wings. Speak up, please, Randy. There's no public address system. This is just for the TV, so we need you to speak up oh, so okay. we can be heard okay. in the right. other part of the room. Well, first of all, I guess I have to ask you before I go any further with this. And I, did I miss a candidate? Did Nate. I miss a, well, I'm going to get to him. Uh -oh. Did I miss anybody? No, no. I, no, I said I'll get to you. But uh, my question is going to require quite a t uh, long period of time to get an answer to. And... Uh, I don't know how long this room is rented by you and what it's going to cost you if it, it costs the. Uh, Till 8 o'clock. Till 8 o'clock? Well, we got 8 Well, then probably we can get done this. Well, anyway, uh, I guess the room, pretty much everybody in the room knows me in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but I don't know if everybody knows I've just recently uh, come to my senses and I'm now a Republican. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and, Now, now, listen, I wanted to tell you, I was always a uh, Ronald Reagan Democrat. So I didn't take a drastic change, okay? But uh, my questions with Mr. And, and, and incidentally, I've had business to do with all these people in one way, shape, or form, including Mr. Harmon. But uh, the question I have for Mr. Harmon, which seems, you seem to be evading, that I know well about and you know well about, and uh, I don't want anybody to think that this, uh, i got a chip on my shoulder for Mr. Harmon. This is an actual uh, event that happened between us when he was a trooper. So, Mr. Harmon, can you tell us the reason and the circumstances that you left the West Virginia State Police and when you, were, and when you applied for reinstatement, why did they refuse to rehire you? I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the question, Randy, but let me first start off by uh, thanking you for everything you've done with the community, especially the equipment that, that you had purchased and donated for law enforcement agencies, including the state police, and I appreciate your help. I'm a coach down at Musselman High School, uh, coaching the girls' basketball, and I really appreciate you adding to that rec center, too. So thank you very much for your service to the community. Um, he brings up a good point. Why did I leave the state police? Well, politics got involved with the state police. But that's not the reason why I left. The reason why I left was to pursue a career with my paperwork accepted with a security company to go overseas and protect the United States ambassador of Iraq. I continued that career and protected two ambassadors. Continued after that, went to New York and did executive protection for a Fortune 500 family. It gave me a true perspective of working with the federal government. And I really appreciate the experience I gained with dealing with multi-million dollar contracts that I not only managed, but I protected one of the most important people in Baghdad, Iraq, representing the United States. I would also protect Donald Rumsfeld, George Bush, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. I wanted to pursue those opportunities. I had a fellow trooper six months prior to my departure that sat there and went to the same security company and pursued a career. I very much appreciated what he was doing. I wanted that same rounding experience. And of course, when I was done traveling, uh, you know, it doesn't work well for domestic relations when you're gone all the time. So I wanted to get back in law enforcement. I called Jack Chambers specifically after passing every facet of that test. And he did not give me a reason other than you had been out too long. 
That's exactly what Jack Chambers told me over the telephone. He said, I knew this call was coming. I said, Jack, it's in my blood. I want to give back to the community. I'm done traveling. I want to start back my law enforcement career. I was denied that law enforcement career because I had been out of law enforcement for seven years. But subsequently after that, lo and behold, the manpower, you see the manpower issues with the state police. I got a call from the lieutenant colonel in Charleston wanting me back. Jokingly, I said, well, can you give me my tenure back, my stripes? And because technically working for BSR Training Center, teaching law enforcement, teaching uh, military, teaching civilians in emergency preparedness, the financial situation that might put me in is going to be a burden to my family. And we laughed it off a little bit, but he could not do that. All right, so for the betterment of my family, I could not make the choice. Once being offered to come back into the state police, I could not make that choice for the betterment of my family. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that story, but I just wish you would have answered the question. Okay. You know, you haven't answered the question. I you know I'd... the answer, but you haven't answered the question. I... So just answer the question. Okay. I'll repeat myself again. I left I the state police that answer, that because political. question. I'll tell you one thing as an administrator. I will not allow politics to go into the inner ranks of my deputies. I will not. I was victim of that. I'm not going to rehash what kind of politics those was. But when my administration threatened to take all the deputies off doing traffic accidents in the entire county, county until you do something with this specific trooper, that's politics. That's politics I will not allow in the inner ranks of that department. I refuse it. Why? Because I fell victim to it. But in a timely fashion, the security company that I worked for accepted my paperwork. I went overseas and protected the United States ambassador. Why I left? Politics entered the ranks. I was offered a better job. I was offered better financial situation for my family. Why was I denied? Because I was out too long, as per verbatim of Jack Chambers, who was the lieutenant colonel down at the state police. But, to add to that, he denied me, but then I got a call back from the recent lieutenant colonel of the state police wanting me back. And financially, I just could not do it. I believe that answers your question. Thank you. I don't, it doesn't answer my question. And I limited the five minutes because I certainly cannot uh, cover well, this in five minutes. Is he an ex-sheriff? Are you a sheriff or are you an ex-sheriff? If you're not, you start showing some respect. All right, please, folks, please, please. No, I'm every, right now. Don't hand gestures like that. I see people get in trouble for that every day. Are you an ex-sheriff? Thank you for your opinion, sir. Yeah, I'd like to be able to uh, finish the questioning. You know, the, the one thing that uh, hasn't been mentioned here, uh, at least by Mr. Harmon in all his speeches, is one of the main things that makes a good sheriff, I think, is the ability to know the laws of, of, of arrest, search, and seizure, and just be honest. I appreciate that. Well, I... I And I, I, I think this, this is too much of a personal uh, issue, and I'm not accusing you of, of having an issue or, or him of having an issue, but it's, it's not the kind of question that could be answered under these circumstances. It's and it is, it, it's good. something for the... Uh, <laughs> we've gotten to know a lot about our candidates this evening, uh, Randy. And, I and think you've got all good candidates except one. No, I, I know all these candidates, and I know their honesty. Of their honesty. Well, thank you, thank you. I th yes, um, the, I'd like to just take one or two more questions, folks, because it it the time is going uh, is passing, and uh, and I've lost both my microphones now. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Uh, good evening. My name is Bill Lackney. Um, I'm a retired federal agent. I've worked in and around the Shenandoah Valley on task force over the last 30 years. 
And I know for a fact, because of the current administration you have, that their relationship with state, local, and federal agencies is very strong. And that is an important resource for your sheriff's office to have. How, and I'll give this to all five candidates, how are you going to reestablish those relationships to work in your favor? Because manpower for you is an issue right now, and that is a resource that can greatly help you right from the very beginning. It's an excellent question. I think it'll be a good one to con conclude the evening on, since I'm right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that question, Bill. Um, like I said earlier, fostering relationships with these organizations, and right now, currently, they're non-existent. I've already sat down with the uh, DEA. I've already talked with the ATF. I've already talked with the HIDA team for the state police. I know Major Whitmire personally, and I can tell you these agencies want to train with the deputies. These agencies want to work and have a good working relationship with the deputies. And I can tell you right now, I will come in this office upon swearing in and already have established these relationships with these federal agencies. Bringing these federal agencies and their resources to help combat the drug problem that we have in this county. As a matter of fact, I'm going down Charleston next week to advocate to legislators a drug house ordinance very similar to what you see in Martinsburg. When you have a 54% reduction in drug overdoses because what the city of Martinsburg is doing, well, why can't we do it? And the common thing that you hear is, well, you're just kicking the problem out to the county. Okay, well, what are you doing about it? I've already drafted a template under the 60A code that talks about drug activity that basically mirrors the same ordinance Martinsburg PD has. That's action, and that's what I bring to the table. Is I don't give you lip service. I'm man of action, and I've already sat down at the table with these agencies, already started fostering relationships with the prosecuting attorney's office, and already fostered relationships with Stephanie at the Berkeley Recovery Resource Center, Kevin Knowles at the Mountaineer Recovery Resource Center. These relationships have already started, and that's why I intend to keep doing this. Thank you. Would any of the other candidates care to comment? That's a good question. I, I think I touched on it a little bit earlier. You've got to have your resources in line. You've got to know who you can reach out to. And you have to work as a team. I, I, like I, I said earlier, I've already created a website, tip-watch.com, for the community to be involved. Because even though you have these resources, state level, it really comes down to getting the community involved. If the community doesn't get involved, it doesn't really matter about what other outside resources that you have. And while dealing with these resources, state, federal, I'd be very clear. I'll work with you. I appreciate your assistance. However, the freedom and the security of my citizens in the county are my priority. So if they tried to enforce something that would hamper that liberty or security, I'm not going to go along with that. If any others would care to comment, you're welcome. I asked the other candidates, and I, I'm not sure if they want to comment, So, I, but I do want to, just for a second, uh, again, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. I've done this before, and, you know, it's, it's the same thing. You know, a lot of us are going to say almost the same thing. I swear they read my website tonight. I swear. I, I know they did. I, I mean, I'm just joking, but absolutely everything I've posted is the same thing they're saying. And I'm not saying that they're doing anything wrong. They're, we just all agree. We all feel the same way. We all want to move the department in the same direction. I, I do think that the relationship between the other organizations and the Sheriff's Department is extremely strained, and it needs dealt with. I don't think it's uh, something you can go in with a hard nose. I don't think it's something that you can just expect to happen. I think you have to use caress, and you have to actually reach out to them. And it's tit for tat a lot of times. You've got to do something for them, they do something for you. That's just the way the real world works. But we do need to foster that relationship. But more importantly, we need to bring the community back into this whole thing. They need to know what's going on. They need to be an active part day to day of what's going on. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Anyone else care to comment? Or we're good. Okay, thank you. I'm getting a hand signal from the individual who was kind enough to establish this uh, this little forum this evening. That uh, we've probably spoken long enough. Uh, it's very warm in here, and it's uh, it's been a very informative night for me. I want to thank you all for coming. Let me ask a quick question: How many of you in this room plan to vote? 
ladies and gentlemen, there's the answer. The subject that was not addressed this evening was the question of respect for law enforcement personnel. That's not something that's going to happen in this room. It's going to be something, something that's going to happen in your home. Teach respect for human life. Teach respect for authority. And respect for law enforcement personnel will naturally follow. Thank you again for coming tonight. And please remember to tip your servers this evening. They've worked very hard dodging among this rather dodgy group of people. It's been my pleasure meeting those of you I didn't know before. Thank you all very much. You don't know this about me. I'm retired CIA. I had nine embassy assignments.